Now, since last June's very close and hotly debated referendum, the arguments about how Britain will leave the European Union have raged on. This week gave us some clarity on the issue with the Prime Minister's speech on Tuesday, but it certainly didn't mark an end to the arguments about how easy or successful the process might prove to be. Parliament will have a vote on the final deal, but already the criticism has started. If all her optimism of a deal with the European Union didn't work, we would move into a low-tax, corporate taxation, bargain basement economy. I'm not prepared for Scotland to be taken down a path that I firmly believe is going to be damaging. Now, businesses are very worried that getting that deal in principle within two years is pretty unrealistic and that what we might do is then fall off a cliff into this regulatory tr and trade no-man's land and people have warned that that would be very damaging. This is one day, 24 hours, in what is going to be a long, complicated, fraught and difficult process. And there are people here in Westminster still and, more importantly, perhaps on the other side of the negotiating table, those 27 countries who believe what she's asking for is a delusion. Several viewers got in touch with us to complain of what they saw as a lack of balance in the coverage. Elizabeth Miller asked, does the BBC never get tired of being so negative about Brexit? Who was the first person interviewed at the end of the speech? Tim Farron. He is in total denial about the decision to leave the EU and there is no way he is ever likely to be objective about the issue. The trend has continued with all sorts of experts being wheeled out to say a disaster is about to happen and reporters asking loaded questions. Give negotiations a chance and provide an even-handed coverage, please. And other viewers echoed that, such as Arthur Smith, who emailed... Once again, the pro-EU BBC managed to put its end-is-nigh spin on the speech. You would have thought that Armageddon was upon us. We had analysis from various reporters, all stressing what they regard as the negatives of leaving the EU, as if we are on the road to certain ruin. As always, very little mention of the positives which lie ahead for us. Well, let's talk about this to Katie Sell, who's the editor of BBC Political News, and she joins us from our Westminster studio. Katie, let's start with the complaints about who is getting airtime. Many viewers, as you heard there, are saying too many voices giving initial reaction to May's speech are hostile to Brexit, and essentially the BBC is rehashing the whole debate that we had in the referendum. I think the job as journalists, and is true whether it's at the BBC or across other media or indeed the newspapers, is to question... Uh, and, and ask for answers that we don't have. And we, the country voted for Brexit, but it's, it's really left many, many questions unanswered. Actually, on uh, Tuesday when the Prime Minister gave her speech, we gave a great deal of coverage to the speech itself, which set out the, uh, the arguments and the plans for Brexit from the government. But it did leave many, many questions unanswered. And you heard there from... Jeremy Corbyn and Nicola Sturgeon uh, with their own questions. So we're not just asking the questions just from the BBC's point of view, although we would do that as journalists. We're putting the concerns of the other main politicians in this country uh, to, uh, to try and get some answers, and the answers that we don't have. Part of that concern, though, is about the language used by reporters. You know, a lot of people are very concerned. Is there too much hypothetical worry rather than straight reporting of what the Prime Minister said? We did a piece that ran at about five and a half minutes for the main six and ten o'clock news programmes that night. And actually, that's a very long, long piece for, for news um, at that point. And uh, that, we did that specifically because we wanted to give uh, the people, the audience, to, uh, the chance to hear the Prime Minister's case on what was a defining speech uh, from the government. So I think we did give airtime to that. But as I say, there's then the opportunity to say, well, hang on a minute, we're trying to do the job for the audience, which is to raise questions they may have in their mind and answer questions that they may think, well, she didn't really explain that. And what does that mean? Um, and why would we do that? So it's very much our job as journalists to, to try and do that for the audience. In fact, that's, that's part of what we're for, um, is to try and get to the answers and try and give some clarity uh, where there is perhaps none coming from the government. It sounds from some of the viewers' complaints we're getting, though, that you know, the BBC might say, look, we're dealing with where there's concerns, there's questions, and essentially you're looking for the drama. But perhaps the BBC needs to slightly rethink the tone in which it covers these things and the assumptions made. 
Certainly, I, I would agree that tone is absolutely vital, and that's true of any any story that we cover. Um, and we, you know, we think carefully about this. I think we try and we look at our scripts over again. We think about the words that we use, and I'd be very careful if we were adopting a tone that was reflected one side or the other. I think you know, it's, it's the BBC continues to be. Uh, you know, committed to impartiality, and that's true of the Brexit debate as it is on any other subject. Is it as simple as the BBC more often actually simply needs to caveat, um, you know, more that we just don't know or what a lot of this is going to mean? I think that's absolutely true, um, and we do do that. And one of the things we've set up um, in the last couple of years is the BBC's reality check, which is there to try and get to the bottom of those unanswered questions and try and provide uh, the audience with some clarity and some facts and figures. Actually, very often the answer will come, well, there's this evidence and that evidence, but in truth, we don't really know the outcome. Do you think there might actually be more good news about Brexit out there that could be reported? I think we should absolutely do that. Um, we will try and uh, make every effort as the negotiations go on to ask the question, is that a good thing, is that a bad thing? Um, you know, again, it's part of our job to, to present um, every side of that. And I, I would agree that we will be looking for that opportunity as much as highlighting any concerns or problems with it. Katie Sell, thank you very much.